stash here with Explodes on Six Gamings. Uh, so I'm under a little bit of the weather right now, but hopefully that won't be an issue for the creation of this video. I hope not. But anyway, I figured, uh, seeing as how I have an internet connection again, and that uh, I have survived Hurricane Michael, and uh, I feel like to commemorate that, we should do a unit review. <laughs> so my focus is mostly just going to be on you know your vanilla Space Marine units, mostly just because that's what I play and know, um, and especially <clears throat> post Chapter Proof 2018, Vigilus, and FAQ, all those things that have just recently come out. I, I kind of want to go through each of the units within the, the Space Marine uh, Codex, as much of those that I can, that I you know, won't get frustrated talking about. Because um, Space Marines are not in a very good place competitively right now. So I'm going to try and do the best that I can to help you make a more sound decision, both on the tabletop and otherwise, as far as how you're going to build your army. Right, what works, what doesn't work, what I've seen personally, what I've seen other people do that works or doesn't work. So we're going to get into all that. <clears throat> Since speaking about Vigilus, I feel it's kind of appropriate that uh, the review that I'm going to do today for you all is uh, Papa Smurf and his drinking buddies. Now I know the, the camera quality isn't all that great. I apologize for that. Uh, you got what you got right now, and the only thing I can record videos on is my uh, camera on my computer. So let's kind of uh, let's get into it, then, right? So <clears throat> Papa Smurf, or Marnius Calgar, as you probably know him, uh, Ultramarines chapter master, you know, gets browbeat by Gilman incessantly after he gets revived. Like, who are you again? How? How are you in charge? Like, who screwed that up? And Gilman basically proceeds to just give him, like, the B-list jobs within, you know, basically the Imperium that Gilman is now running. Marnius ain't too keen on that. And Marnius is like, man, I, I've been running things for you when you were asleep, Dad. Like, what, now? Now you're going to, now you're going to, now I'm just on the beach put, bench? Put me in the game, coach. So Marnius decides that, you know what? <clears throat> Daddy ain't giving me enough attention. I'm going to get me some attention. So he goes from normal Space Marine. And if you if you don't know a lot about the lore regarding Marnius Calgar, he is a quadriplegic, like, and missing an eye. True statement, no lie. Uh, so normally, uh, yeah, he's missing some limbs, and he's like, all right, watch this, Dad. I'm going to go get Primarisified. What? But you're already a Space Marine. Like, uh... Yeah, too bad. Watch it. Death before dishonor, right, Dad? So that's kind of how he ends up as big as he is. Uh, I'll see if I got... I don't think I have a, a mini marine floating around uh, right now, and I don't really have any other kind of... So I got a... Uh... So I guess to give you a size comparison, I guess the next biggest model I've got hanging around right now is a... Uh... Chaplain and Dreadnought Armor. There you go. Let's make it easier. So I got a Chaplain and Dreadnought Armor, right? <clears throat> so you can tell Marnius is substantially a lot bigger than the Chaplain is. Maybe not substantially, but he's definitely bigger. Uh, you know, if I had a better camera, that would be easier to show you, you know, the, the, the definition of, like, how how much bigger Marnius actually is. Um, so he gets in this new edition after he gets uh, after he turns into Primarnius Calgar. Let's see what I did there. After he turns into that, and I, I'll just say this from a rules based perspective, he's better than he's ever been. Like I, I kind of had qualms about taking him before when he was in his armor of Anticulus or the Terminator armor variant of him, right? I kind of had qualms because, you know, it's like, okay, he's 200 points, he, he lets you re-roll all hits. But beyond that, it's not all that great. You know? Uh, Five-inch move, Terminator armor, yeah, he's got the two-up save and the four-up end ball, and then he halves all damage that comes in, but you know, he just has seven wounds, and 
that's it. Like, once he's on the board, you still got the same problems with him that you got with normal Terminators. So, if you if you wanted to, if before if you wanted to take Marnius Calgar, it's kind of like you were super buff for your Alpha Strike before they nerfed, you know, deep striking Alpha Strikes in one of the FAQs. I can't remember which one, but basically, you can't even do deep strike until it's your turn two. So that. And I mean, are you really going to foot slog Marnius Calgar and Terminator armor? Probably not. Probably not. Plus, you know, Honor Guard were good for soaking up wounds. And that's the other unsung hero of this new release is the Vitrix Guard. So throw these guys back on here again. The Vic, at first, when the Vitrix Guard came out, I thought, you know, they. They're just more expensive honor guard. Like, what what do they really do better than what the honor guard do, which are cheaper, and you can easily get more off of eBay? Just flood the board with this to make your guy invulnerable to basically getting killed by name a thing, right? So, as you can see, I've kind of uh, done up my Victrix guard in the Nova Marine kind of color scheme. And if you haven't figured it out by now, uh, <clears throat> I play Nova Marines using Ultramarines rules. So these guys work out great. Just, you know, for a fluff for fluff purposes, change all the names around, change Marty's Calgarda, whatever it is you want to name your chapter master that's using Ultramarines rules or this, that, the other thing. And obviously you can do whatever you want in open or narrative play, it doesn't matter. Um, but for competitive purposes, yeah, Marnius at this point is like the heir to the Gilliman throne. He's not he's never gonna be as good as Gilliman. I'll just throw that out there right now. He's never gonna be good as Gilliman. But if you're looking to build a list that does not have Sen does not have Gilman as your center of gravity, i.e. you're not either running the Gilman gun line or the Gilman rush line or any of that, right? Marnius Caligar now is an amazing Amazing second best, right? So uh, let me just get his data sheet all queued up here just so when the time comes I don't mess up what he is and actually isn't. You know what I mean? You know, words mean things. I want to be as accurate as I can be. Um, <clears throat> Marnie is now compared to what he used to be. Uh, you know, movement six in Gravis armor. Uh, damn. So normally Gravis Armor, like you look at an aggressor, it's 5-inch movement. And you basically have to advance roll them to, to get them to where you need them to go. Or you put them in a repulsor. And you know, that's it's, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of scenario with anything in Gravis Armor. armor. Even in Scepters, because they're in Gravis Armor, the, uh, the new Primaris Jump Troops. They don't move 12 inches with their jump packs like how Assault Marines or uh, Vanguard Vets or any, any model wearing a jump pack does. They move 10. And that's because they're heavier and their jump packs just are like straining to just get this fat kid in the air like, come on! You know? But Marnius doesn't. Marnius moves 6. He can, he can run and gun with the exact same speed as everybody else in the army. About 80% of the models he can keep up with. Which is awesome. So movement six, weapon skill and ballistic skill two, strength four. This is where I this is one of the reasons why I think this is the best that Marnius has ever been. Toughness five. Thank you, Gravis Armor. So that toughness five is basically gonna make him it, it it just makes the world a difference. It makes him completely and utterly less susceptible to small arms fire and you know like your baseline infantry small arms attacks in the fight phase. Wounding if you know even even normal bolters and and things at strength four either attacks or shooting wound them on fives. That's huge. That's one in three rolls. If they get past the hits, you don't reroll your hits. Any other debuffs or whatever else you got that you, know, you can do as ultra wounds or with your allies, your opponent can only wound Marnius on five. And oh by the way. Wounds of eight. Eight wounds. Gilliman has nine, right? And obviously it's Gilliman, whatever. But eight wounds for 
just a named character that is not like a Primarch. Damn, son. Damn. Oh, also, by the way, one of his uh, special rules. Armor of Hera... Her uh, sorry, my English ain't that great. Heracles. Armor of Heracles. We're going with it. Marty Skalgar has a 4-up invuln save. In addition, all damage suffered by Marty Skalgar is halved, rounding up. What? So, to put this in perspective, if for some reason your bubble wrapping fails on Marnius, and he starts taking heat from stuff like Laz Cannons, another th reason why Toughness 5 is so great, Laz Cannons are not going to wound him on 2s anymore. They're going to wound him on 3s, which, in the long run, might not be a big deal. But that's only 66%. That's not 78, whatever, whatever 5 6 is in a percentage. It's not that. 2 out of 3 times he gets wounded instead of 5 out of 6 times getting wounded. And on top of that, let's say worst case scenario happens and he gets hit and wound, wound get, gets hit and wounded by a LAS cannon. Just throw that, it could be anything, right? But I'm just going with LAS cannon. Go with what you know, kind of, right? So let's say he gets wounded by a LAS, LAS cannon and he takes six damage. Well, guess what? No, nope, sorry, I'm only taking three. Ando, by the way. On top of a four pinball save, he still has his awesome two up armor save that he's that he's that he had with the uh, that he had with his Terminator armor. So what you have is, and I guess if people are going to complain, he doesn't have the relic blade anymore like the Terminator armor uh, model did. So as far as shooting and melee go, so he's got his little guns on his gauntlets. He has the gauntlets of Ultramar. So, range 24, rapid fire 2, strength 4, AP minus 1, damage 2. Yeah, this guy this guy can do the business if he just needs to just chew through some multi-wound models real quick, especially if he's about to go get into the assault phase. Like, let's say, let's say you're facing off against another Marine player, right? And they are just bringing intercessors and hellblasters, this, that, the other thing, right? For every failed save that your opponent has at two wound models, that's just a dead model. So best case scenario, Marnius takes down, in, within rapid fire range, he takes down four intercessors before he charges in. Just to just to make the scenario simple, right? So yeah, they're still going to get a four up armor save, but it ain't that hard to fail four up armor saves. And every single failed save, again, is a dead two wound model. That's pretty good. Uh, but the Gauntlets of Ultramar, oh, yeah, I forgot to also, I don't know if I did or not, if I did, somebody will put it in the comments, but dude has six attacks. What? So, to give this some extra panage, if you have somebody like Tigerius buffing him psychically, you just give him a uh, Might of Heroes. Now, oh, oh, now, he's Strength 5, Toughness 6, the same toughness as Gilman, and he has seven attacks. So the Gauntlets of Ultramar are melee, melee, strength times two. So anywhere between in that scenario, if he's not buffed, strength eight. If he is buffed, strength ten, AP minus three, D3 damage. Damn, son. Damn. So <clears throat> that's going to help you out a lot. You have to deal... Just name a thing. It just does. It's D3 damage at AP minus three. And if you're going up against something that's like armor save four, that's basically just three damage that you just get to pump into something, so to speak. Uh, so yeah, I, I think you know the only thing that Marnius cannot do now. Okay, the only two things that Marnius cannot do now are one, hop in a land raider, two, teleport strike. You can't. You know, if you're if you were if you're cool. Given that stuff up, then Marnius is incredible. Uh, and I got to play test Marnius last weekend uh, at my local shop. Granted, maybe the opponent I faced wasn't the, the greatest uh, army to really test him out on. But hey, you, you get what you get. People want to play a game, and you're like, okay, let's do this. So. Uh, last weekend, I used him and the Victrix Guard against a pure Slaneshi Demon list. 
Um, you know, off the top of my head, the, the list had three demon princes. Again, all with the Marcus Marcus Linesh. Three demon princes. No, no warp bolters. Um, and I'm not really too familiar with demon lists anyway. But it was bottom line. It was just a non-shooting all assault horde army. It was just like there was a lot of it. And I don't think I had any more. I couldn't have had any more than like. I don't even think I had 30 models on the table. And at first, I was kind of concerned. I'm like, uh, maybe I should put more stuff out there. I don't know. But I mean, Marnius did exactly, exactly what I put him out there to do. Uh, just to kind of put this into more perspective, here's some more of his abilities, right? So, and they shall know no fear, standard space marine stuff, not going to read that. Already talked about Armor of Heracles, Chapter Master. This is one of the reasons why I brought him. You can re-roll fail to hit rolls for friendly Ultramarines units within six of Marius Calgar. That's the exact same thing that Gilman does. You're doing it for exactly half the points. The only thing you're not getting that most people bring Gilman for is re-roll all failed wounds. And that's a cheap solution. Bring a non-primaris lieutenant, just stock, 63 points. Even then, it's st you're still saving 137 points over Gilman. That's like, you could, you could throw in a smash captain. You could throw in any, anything you want for 137 points. Like, that's, that is a lot of pointage that you just freed up, right? And then Master Tactician, if your army is Battleforged, you receive an additional two command points if Marius Calgar is your warlord. So again, you're missing out on one extra free command point because you're not bringing Gilm in, but it's like, still, two free command points? Come on now. Yes. Abaddon does that for you for Black Legion. And my argument right now is that Abaddon is nowhere near as good as Marius is now. Maybe, maybe they were comparable when Marnius was still rocking the Terminator armor. But Marnius, like right now, it, I, I hate to say it, if you're an Ultramarine player, it says me, you either bring Gilliman, and if you don't bring Gilliman because you want to like free up some points, you bring Marnius. Like, that's what you do. Right? So Marnius basically... Helped me mop the, and when I say mop the floor, like, okay, this is this is how bad it was, right? So it was a 1,500-point game. And my list had a Leviathan Dreadnought with three hunter-killer missiles, two heavy flamers, a storm cannon array, and a Grabflux Bombard. <clears throat> I had a seven-man Hellblaster squad, a Company Ancient, an Apothecary, uh, Marnius, uh, a two-pack of Victrix guards, so just two dudes in a Victrix guard unit. Uh, three five-man scout squads with heavy bolters in all of them. Uh, oh, and the Forge World uh, Nova Marines captain. So, and that's that's basically all I was able to bring. That's all I brought, right? That's it. Like it doesn't seem like a whole lot. Realistically, when you think about it, it's really not. Oh, sorry, and I forgot. <clears throat> and a lieutenant, because it's not Gilman. You need a lieutenant. So I brought all that against like three demon princes and this massive like uh, I'm going to come tickle your insides like Zerg horde rush slanesh demon army. Like the whole point of that army was rush the field as quickly as you can, get in combat, horde control, right? So outside of the scouts basically bring scouts to die. They did their job. But here's the crazy thing. This list, I only lost one unit. One whole unit. One unit of scouts. In the very, my center, my center located unit of scouts for board control. That's all I lost. And then I only lost three scouts from another squad, and one Hellblaster. That is it. And I, I was able to table that guy. I was like, uh, well, damn some. Okay, I get it. You know, Leviathan Dreadnought, Hellblaster is doing the business. Doing what they do, I get that, right? But none of that would have been possible without Marnius there. Because Marnius let me re-roll things that I normally would 
never have been allowed to do because I'm rerolling all failed hits, not just rerolling hits of one. And obviously the lieutenant helped there with high, high enough strength stuff. That's perfect. You don't need a reroll all wounds capability if your strength is high enough, like IE supercharging hell blasters and your Leviathan doing work and power weapons, and power fists, all that stuff. You only need the lieutenant. You really only need the lieutenant. Like you only need the lieutenant. So <clears throat> now moving on to the Victrix Iron Guard, because I think we beat Gillum to death enough. Uh, actually, yeah, I'll have I'll have the Ventrix Honor Guard data sheet just in front of me, and then I'll compare that to the Honor Guard data sheet, um, and you guys will kind of hopefully be able to see, you know, why. Because <clears throat> I'll be honest with you, like I said, I thought Ventrix Honor Guard was just a gimmick. Like, why would you ever take that when you could just load up the board with like four? Honor Guard models, right? That's eight spare extra wounds. like, And for what they do, kind of sort of cheap, right? At 52 points for a two-man squad, 104 points. Like, yeah. I mean, even with a Gilman list, if you if you brought enough Honor Guard, then like when people try to snipe at Gilman, it's like, oh, hey, uh, chaff, here's some wounds. Take that for me, right? Like the old lookout sir rule is basically what we're doing. But Victrix Honor Guard does it way better, in my opinion. And oh, by the way, <clears throat> they don't—they do not have to replace the Honor Guard. You can still take Honor Guard with Victrix Honor Guard. I'm going to say I'm going to explain to you here in a little bit why you may want to do that and why. Yeah, you you should do it, right? So we'll, we'll start with normal Honor Guard, and then we'll read off Victrix Honor Guard kind of compare and contrast, and I'll show you why Victrix is way better, right? So, bear with me. Honor Guard, movement 6, weapon skill, ballistic skill, both 3, strength and toughness 4, wounds 2, attacks 2, leadership 9, save plus 2. Sounds pretty good so far, right? So, typically, you're going to, the way that they're modeled, right, because you get Honor Guard, if we're doing Dark and Ultramarines, you get Honor Guard out of the old Marnius Calgar and Terminator Armor box set, right? It comes with two of them. So, unit contains two Honor Guard. Hey, that's why. <clears throat> Each model is armed with a bolt gun, bolt pistol, power axe, frag grenades, and crack grenades. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you have some shooting capability with them. You have grenades, and you have power axes. Not, not too shabby. Now, here's the reason why you bring Honor Guard. It's not for the shooting. It's not for the close combat. It's for... I'm about to read. Uh, Honor Guard. Roll a D6 each time a friendly chapter... Chapter word. Character. <laughs> loses a wound whilst they're within three inches of this unit. On a two-up, that a model from this unit can intercept that hit. The character does not lose a wound, but this unit suffers a mortal wound. That's why you bring them is basically like mortal wound mitigation. Uh, people that have sniper rifles that can target characters, that kind of mitigation. And and basically if there's ever a time, like let's say let's say Marty Isher Gilman gets into combat, right? And they lose a couple wounds, or they get shot at and they lose a couple wounds. Those dudes are hanging out like right next to them, like Velcro. You can just be like, alright, two up. Oh. Okay, and especially if it's like D3 or D6 weaponry or multi-wound weaponry, like two damage, three damage, four damage, you can, that's just a cheap sacrifice, just like, oh, I don't even need to think about it, uh, four flat damage and Gilman just took it. Sorry, Honor Guard, sucks to be you, but uh, I need Gilman to be for a lot as healthy and alive for as long as possible. Same thing with Marnus, but again... Gilliman has a better impulse save, but Gilman does not have the have all damage coming in. So with Marnius, which is why I think he is God's greatest gift to Ultramarines players, let's say same scenario, flat four damage weapon. Okay, now it's, now it's only two. Now you only need to roll two for your Victor guard, and guess what? If it's a normal honor guard with four total wounds amongst the unit, that's one extra guy that gets to stick around. And, oh, by the way, 
it's for any of your characters. So if you have a big like Death Star gun line character blob moving up the board, you don't have to use your honor guard on just like a Marius or a Gilliman. You can use them on a librarian, you can use them on a lieutenant, a chaplain, tech marine. Any of any anybody with the character keyword, they are a good mitigating, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Force multiplier for you. So they're great in that regard. So let's read the Victrix Honor Guard now, which are basically the Primaris version of the normal Mini Marine Honor Guard. Victrix Honor Guard, Movement 6, Weapon Skill, Ballistic Skill 3, Strength and Toughness 4, Wounds 3, Primaris, duh, Attacks, Attacks 4. So now you have double the amount of attacks compared to your normal Honor Guard. Leadership 9, Save 2. So. This unit contains two Victrix Honor Guard. Each model is armed with a Power Sword, Storm Shield, Frag Grenades, and Crack Grenades. Okay, so you lose out on one strength because you don't have a Power Axe, right? And you also lose out what you, what you gain, and you lose out on the shooting attack. But you gain an additional minus one AP. And oh, by the way, your Honor Guard now has a Storm Shield. What? Oh, and uh, they have an extra wound each piece. So now that same two model unit has an invuln save. And oh, by the way, you have two extra wounds instead of just rocking around a two man unit with four unit for, with four wounds. Now you've got a two man unit with six. So that's amazing. That is great. That means if you're also running around with an apothecary in that same scenario where normally a, a flat two damage transfer to them would kill a guy. Now one of your honor guard are going to live, and there's a very high likelihood, if you're playing the averages, that if he's around to the start of your next turn, that apothecary is going to bring those two wounds back, and your opponent's going to be pissed. That that happened to me in this game that I played with the Sinashi Army. <laughs> um, so same rules with them, and they shall have no fear. I'm not going to read that. So honor guard of McCrag. This is the exact same you know, honor guard rules that the previous one had, so I'm not going to read that. Now, this is one thing that they get over the previous. This is another special rule they get over the honor guard. Heroes of Ultramar. This unit can perform a heroic intervention as if they were a character. Dang. Ooh. <laughs> so... And here's another thing, too. If you're willing to, to shell out the financial you know, cabbage to get yourself either a second uh, Marnius Calgar box with the Victrix Guard, you can have a unit with more than just two Victrix Guard. You can have a unit with like four, with six, with five. And basically, it's going to be hella expensive because each unit of two dudes is 64 points minus 52. Now you may be thinking, oh, that's not that much. It adds up when you're trying to get other things into your army. So if you're running around with 128 points worth of Victor's Guard, yeah, like Gilman will maybe become nigh unkillable. Because at that point, he's got 12 spare extra three up invuln save wounds that he can just dump a whole bunch of stuff into to keep himself alive. And Oh, by the way, if it's Marnius, half of those wounds he's dumping into him, he's having himself, which is amazing. It, it, it's like the ride never ends with, with, with this new thing, right? So the last thing in here, this is really dubious, right? Which is another reason why I'm like, yes, Marnius is the new... He's not going to be the new superpower compared to Gilman. But if you're not looking to build a list around Gilman, this is why, I, this is another reason among the, among the list of reasons why you bring it. Calgar's Honor Guard. If your army is Battleforged, this unit does not take up slots in a detachment that includes Marnius Calgar. What? So, if you bring Marnius as, like, part of a Vanguard detachment, right? That's typically you're only ever going to have 
want to say it's three to five, the internet will correct me. That's why it's here. Let's say you can only have three to five elite choices within that attachment, right? Well, now you've got six. Because as long as they're rolling around with Marnius and whatever detachment he's in, they don't take up a slot, which they're an elite choice. And it's just, especially if you load up your Victrix Guard unit with like three, four, five Victrix Guard. Yeah, like that, that's good. That is good. So all together, to bring Marnius and his two Victrix Guard, it's going to work out to about... Uh, yeah, it's going to work out to about 264 points. Again, infinitely cheaper. And then if you throw in the lieutenant in there, it'll be... Sorry, I'm bad with math. Give me a second. It'll be 327 points. Yeah. So you've got something that's having damage, that has one less wound than Gilliman, that rerolls all your hits, that gives you one less extra command point for making your has, you know, a good enough shooting attack can just be a, a, can just destroy things in combat if and when he has to, can just offload wounds onto other characters. And if you've got enough apothecaries hanging around, they don't ever die. And if they do, you can bring them back and, and really get the rage quit starting, which is something that I don't live for, but I'm not going to also complain if I see it either. <laughs> You know, it, it, he's just, he's just gold. He, he just is. Like, you know, and, oh, and one, one other thing, too. If you're building a Space Marine list, you save yourself having to shell out three command points at the, before the game even starts to turn a captain into a chapter master. You get one. And he is infinitely, almost infinitely better than any other combination of normal vanilla codex space marine chapter masters that you could make for three command points out of any kind of captain build out of the rest of the codex like it just and no other captain build is going to let you have two extra free command points they're, they're not they're just not like yeah like get marnie's calgar and oh by the way i haven't really checked but I would imagine you're getting a hell of a deal money-wise compared to going out and getting yourself a Gilliman model. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe a standalone Gilliman model is cheaper than the box set of like the Victrix Honor Guard and Marnius. And again, I haven't checked, but I'm sure the next time I do a video, I'll, I'll give you guys an update after checking. But my initial suspect, my initial suspicion right now is that. Gilman is not cheaper dollars wise than. Sorry, I gotta do another wipe here. I, my suspicion is that he is not any cheaper <clears throat> than these three dudes right here. Now, you may be asking yourself, like, oh yeah, hey, how'd you get all those uh, super pimp symbols all over your dudes to make them Nova Marines or Nova Fine, right? So. I'm trying to build up, doing a shameless plug here for a company right now. I'm trying to build up my Primaris Marines a little bit in addition because I, I just have a whole horde of mini Marines and mini Marines stuff. So I'm trying to augment and play test around with some of the Primaris stuff and believe if the hype is real on any of the stuff out there. Uh, so I go and use Shapeways. Uh, you just Google it. They have a search function. You go in there and you find what you want. They have 3D printed like uh, shoulder pads and just icons for whatever your chapter is, right? So if you're not one of the mainline chapters, if you're not Dark Angels or Blood Angels or Death Watch or Ultramarines or Imperial or Crimson Fist, blah, 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 they're going to have Games Workshop support to get you upgrade sprues or upgrade components for you to glue on there. Shapeways will 3D print this stuff for you. Tell them what you want, how much of it you want, and you can even specify if you want really high, fine detail. They send it to you. Uh, let's see, another example. Okay, here we go. 
Here's another <clears throat> example, right? And I'll, I'll do a review on these guys on another day. So that is not a transfer sheet. And I know the camera's not all that good, but you can kind of see it's sticking out in the side there. Same thing with the unit shoulder, uh, unit badge, not unit badge, but, uh, you know, basically troop designator badge. All those are 3D printed components. And, uh, stuff like this too, like the little, little base. So, yeah, so it just gives your, it gives your models infinitely just better presence out there on the tabletop. So <clears throat> I think that's that's it for now for the Marius Calgar slash Honor Guard review. So pros, cheaper than Gilliman, does almost exactly the same things minus like the I'm going to come destroy knights in combat now thing. Like, okay, yeah, I'd pay 200 extra points for that too. But if you're trying to if you're trying to build a list, and again, you don't have to take the Iron Guard with, with Marnius. You could just bring Marnius by himself, right? You don't have to take the Iron Guard. If you just take Marnius, you freed up 200 spare points. That's like an extra Devastator squad and then some other things and other war gear. That's like uh, an extra Hellblaster squad. That's, you know, and again, within the 200 point range, I'm not saying Devastator Squad and Hellblaster Squad, I'm just saying within 200 points, this is the extra stuff you could get, right? You could get, if you did it right, you could have a spare Predator hanging around. If you did it right, you could have uh, a spare bike squad. You could load that bike squad up with a whole bunch of anti-vehicle stuff. Again, another Toughness 5 unit. That's super fast. That can go and take and hold stuff. Gilliman limits you as far as what your builds are, to 1,600 points. Straight up, that's it. Marnius lets you do the exact same stuff without trying to build a list to get Gilliman into combat, if that's your thing. Marnius is a little bit more of a purist when it comes to, hey, I just need to re-roll all my hits. And I don't have to get Marnius into combat. Now, is it, would it be good? Yeah, it would be. But you don't have to. He, he is the heir apparent to the Gilman's That's That's all I'll say. So uh, thank you guys for stopping by and watching. Uh, if you like this video, if you'd like to see more, leave a comment down below. Uh, and as always, uh, comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, we try to come up with content. I'm, I'm trying to personally come up with content because now I have more information. It took three months, but hey, whatever. And uh, yeah, so and I'll, I'll get to work on trying to grow back the hand scrub. So until next time, uh, stash or stash wish, stash this, I should say. Coming at you from Close on Six. Thanks, take care.